cars in, in by the end of the year or middle of the year or something like that. And I suspect they're going to achieve that by the next week or the next two weeks or so. It's selling like hotcakes, even better than hotcakes. Anyway, in this video, I'm going to take you for a walk around, show you exactly what's new, what's not so new, and what's great, what's not so great. Uh, this is not a first impression video, it's a first look video. We're not going to drive this car, we're just going to take you for a walk around, so bear with us. We're going to start up front here with the engine still. It's a 2 litre uh, engine, 4 cylinders of course, but as compared to before, it's not a turbocharged engine. It produces about 173 PS having about 203 Newton meters of torque. In fact, this is the same engine that powers the Lexus UX, same gearbox as well, CVT transmission gearbox uh, with 10 virtual sp uh, speeds. So what's different between this and the, the engine in the Lexus UX though, is that this one comes with a balancer shaft and the, the one in the Lexus doesn't. So or is it the other way around? Something like that. So, but we do expect this one. If that's the case, then theoretically, the one with the balancer shaft should be a lot smoother. And if this is the one that comes with the balancer shaft, then this would technically ride better than the Lexus UX. And because it's bigger, looks great and better, it would technically be a better buy than the Lexus UX, right? So, of course, like I said, we are not here to drive this car. So we'll reserve our judgment until we do drive this car. However, it may not be as very as powerful as the outgoing model. It produces about 58 to 60 horsepower less than before. And uh, the thing is, it's a lot more fuel efficient. So you may not, it's also not turbocharged, right? So it may not be as fuel efficient as, uh, sorry, it may not be as powerful as the outgoing model, but it's definitely more fuel efficient considering that it even has a smaller fuel tank, which is smaller than about six liters, I think. So yeah, quite a, quite a good feat over here by Toyota. Not only they made a less powerful engine, but they also made it a lot more fuel efficient. It's just a bit sad actually, because they do have a more powerful engine for the Toyota Harrier, except that that model, that engine is for now available in Singapore. Whether or not it makes it into the Malaysian market, you never quite know yet because this car is a fully imported model. So whether they see KD8 later remains to be seen. But with, with the car selling the hotcakes, I won't be surprised if they do end up CKDing it. And I won't be surprised if that CKD one ends up with a turbocharged engine. But for what it is right now, this engine is not as powerful, but it's a lot more fuel efficient. lesser than a lot of storage space at the back which of course it delivers fantastic amount of room at the back but it's an SUV wouldn't expect anything lesser for this and now we take a look inside Earlier, I was telling you about the lights. It comes with bi LEDs and twin daytime running lights at the front, which looks sexy as hell. So, overall, it's actually exterior wise, as I was saying, it's a much nicer car. Inside, it's business as usual for a Toyota Harrier. It's pure luxury, as you can see. You would not expect anything lesser of a Harrier, right? And it comes with perforated seats as well as heated seats. But before we get to that, just check out how amazing the seats look. Look fantastic. Not only do they look fantastic, they're fantastic to sit on. These are the buttons that control the perforated seats. This one for heating, this one for cool, cool air. So anyway, one thing that I want to show you about the interior of this car is the electrochromatic panoramic roof over here. So you got to start the engine. 
and at the press of this button, look there, becomes transparent. Immediately becomes transparent. Press this button again, and it disappears. Not only that, you can also close the entire thing. There's a, there's a lid over there, so you can close the entire thing in case it gets very hot. Amazing, isn't it? But other than that, it's a fantastic place to be in inside here. So, memory seats. You even get a heated steering wheel. Like I said, this car is imported, so you don't really need a heated steering wheel in Malaysia. So you get different drive modes. I'm always a fan of a gear shifter, so this looks great. The interior is a fantastic place to be in, really, honestly. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. It even has the Harrier logo embossed on the door side. Brilliant. Feels very well built, feels very luxurious. In fact, it feels very much like a Lexus. It also has a wireless uh, charging pad over here and USB slots over here, which is great, always great. The all-new Toyota Harrier also comes with a host of safety features, right? It comes with lane tracing assist that helps you keep the car in the road, uh, in your lane. It comes with an automatic hill start assist that makes sure that the car doesn't roll back when you're starting off on a hill, which is especially handy when you, you know, you're around uh, a bangsa or something like that. And uh, it comes with uh, you know, whew, so many things that uh, even like a pre-crash assist system comes with lane departure, lane tracing assist, even a dynamic radar cruise control, which I also have in my car and I think that is extremely handy, especially when you're driving long distances on the highway. So uh, read more about the Toyota Harrier at Piston.my. We gave you the full details over there. This is our first look at the new, all new Toyota Harrier. We're gonna, I hear we're gonna be driving it quite soon. So we'll give you our first impression of how the all new Toyota Harrier feels like. But for now, it's an amazing looking machine. The interior is amazingly comfortable. We especially love the electrochromatic panoramic roof. Looks amazing, feels amazing. Uh, pity about the loss of power though, but that's fine. Like I said, we'll receive reserve judgment until we get to drive it. For now, we know for sure that theoretically it's a lot more fuel efficient, which in the grand scheme of things is what you want because this is the type of car that you're gonna spend a lot of time with um, in the city and perhaps even the highways. So fuel efficiency is always a good thing. So, Thank you for watching, this is Keshi Dillon and uh, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you like what you see here today. In closing, I'm just going to take you for one more walk around the all-new Toyota Harrier.